Hey everybody, so today we are going to be doing a 10 minutes or less video where we talk about a specific technology and the very gist of what it is so you understand what the heck people are talking about when you hear it. So today we are talking about what is a class versus what is an instance. All right, so a class is not something just found in semantic web or knowledge graph technology. It's something that is very common in object oriented programming. And W3C standards clearly define what a class is. Problem is, it's so simple that I think people get hung up on what is a class and what is an instance because it is very situational. So a class is defined as an abstraction layer that groups like-minded things together. Things that have similar but not exactly the same kinds of characteristics. So in OWL, you'll see this quite often, where let's say animal is the class, animal can be that container of all different types of animals. And if that's the level of abstraction you need for your use case, there's no need to further define all the different types of animals out there. However, in this situation that we're going to talk about today, we're talking about a zoo where specific types of animals are quite important to our modeling. So in that case, animals can still be a class, but I'm going to have some subclasses for tigers and bears, which are the main animals in my use case today. The instances, those are going to be the specific specific tigers and the specific bears I have, not types. Let's say one of my tigers is named Tony the tiger. That's a specific, almost personal identity kind of tiger. That's a good indicator for an instance. So if you want to learn more, let's keep going. Okay, so let's start with our use case. This is something you always want to start with when you are doing any kind of modeling because it is critical in making decisions between what is a class, what is a subclass, and what is an instance, and whether you need to even worry about a meta class or not. So this zoo has a gift store and it has the real zoo part of the park. So in that situation, I might need to understand the difference between a stuffed animal and an animal. So in this case, let's have animal as my highest class. Now, I want to know what kinds of animals I have also at the park because I have specific metadata associated with them. So in that case, let's say tigers and bears, oh my, are the types of animals that I have at my zoo. So tigers can be a subclass of animals because it is rolling up into the type animals. Okay. So we're not gonna go into what you do with RDF in this situation because these are also part of object-oriented programming. So if you're interested in RDF, there's a video up here a little bit about that, but we're going to save that for a later date. Okay, so now we know that we have a class and a subclass. So with tigers, maybe I need to understand different foods that I can feed to tigers. Maybe I need to understand common infections for tigers. Maybe I also have a date as to when I introduce tigers in general to my zoo. These are all pieces of metadata associated with my subclass called tigers. Now these can be strings. They don't have to be anything other than just descriptive text. However, if you also need to understand, let's say, Tigers have a common infection called E. coli. Well, maybe you also need to understand more about how to treat E. coli. Maybe you need to understand the common medications for treating E. coli. How long does that uh, infection usually last? What are the symptoms? If you need to understand some of that information, additional metadata, E. coli could also be a class elsewhere in your data set, maybe underneath the class for diseases or infections or, or medical. In that case, you can still have it as an attribute to Tiger, but it's going to have that unique ID so you can connect those two classes together and understand all the metadata associated with both classes. So you'll notice even though this is a subclass, I'm calling it a class because they are both types of classes. One is a class and one is a subclass. It just really shows that there's a hierarchy to that information. Now, at this stage, you might be asking yourself, okay, but where does instance or individual come into play here? This is actually a highly debated thing in the semantic web community. However, it 
is so highly debated because it's very situational. So let's take the example of a specific type of tiger. Let's say Tony the tiger. Now, you might need to distinguish Tony the tiger, you're great, compared to the tiger that you call Tony in your actual zoo. That is up to your use case because if you have Tony the tiger as in the Kellogg's cornflakes tiger in your gift shop, you might need to distinguish that these two things are different. But let's say for argument's sake, that's not the case here. You have Tony the tiger, his name is Tony. That is an individual specific tiger. In that case, it's a really good indication that that is an instance or an individual associated with the class tiger because it's an individual specific tiger with specific DNA. So how do you distinguish between an individual and class? The main rule of thumb that I use is, is it specific? So I can say that I have a MacBook Pro, but my specific MacBook Pro will have a unique identification, a URL, so to speak, on that specific specific instance of a MacBook Pro. If you can decide something is a specific instance, a specific individual thing that might not exist anywhere else, that is a good indication it is an instance. So let's take another example that is a higher level of abstraction, something that you see oftentimes in knowledge graphs, and that is how the largest level or the meta class of something is related to something else. So in fraud detection, this is often uh, a company has subsidiaries and those are relations and a company has phone numbers or a person has phone numbers and if they are you know sharing a phone number with another company does that mean it's the same company that kind of modeling is at that meta class level it's when you just need to understand the generalities between those very very high level classes now when you're doing fraud detection you eventually want to find out when a specific company is maybe laundering money with a different company, that's when you get into that instance level. Now, if you're dealing thing with things like property graphs, it's a little looser than what you would see in W3C standards where basically anything you want can be a class. The thing is in semantic W3C standards, it's kind of the same. There's a little bit more rules associated with it as far as um, how inheritance goes with inferencing and things like that. But for all intents and purposes, a class is the highest level of abstraction that you want to go. An instance is the lowest level of abstraction that you want to go. And that is my imparting wisdom to anyone who is confused about this. That's the general rule that I use when trying to decide which one is which. I hope that has helped you understand the difference between a class and an instance, and I hope this has encouraged you to think through your own data set. Do you have classes? Do you have instances? Or do you have a mix and you need to go through and really define clearly when something is a class and something is an instance? Okay, so with that, I wanna thank you very much, and I'll catch you next time.